Welcome back to Geekly EDU Biology. Today we're going to talk about different levels of protein structure. First, we have to start with the question, what is a protein? Proteins are basically what is used to create all different parts of our cells and facilitate different cell processes in our bodies. And they're originally created from DNA, which is trans transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into amino acids. And here's the basic structure of an amino acid. And these amino acids are um, combined to create a protein. And as I just mentioned, these proteins have a wide variety of functions. So their structures have to be highly diverse to meet the highly diverse array of functions that they perform in our cells and in our bodies. And the diversity of proteins comes from not only these different amino acids and their sequence, but also from four different levels of protein structure. Starting with the first level of protein structure or primary protein structure, this is the simplest level and it is basically just the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. So it will often just look like little beads along a chain. And this is created um, in the process of translation. So here we have our RNA, and then the RNA is being read by a ribosome, which is the, the dark gray um, protein here in the back. And then the ribosome reads the RNA and then strings along um, the subsequent um, amino acids into our polypeptide chain shown there. And even a change in a single amino acid can lead to a different protein. And so this translation process is really important to make sure that everything runs smoothly within our cells. And if there is an error, um, an example of kind of the consequences of an error in an amino acid sequence is with sickle cell anemia. And so this is where a change in just one amino acid leads to our red blood cells not being the normal red blood cells that can very effectively deliver oxygen, but these very um, differently shaped, almost um, sickle moon shaped hemoglobin or red blood cells that are not as effective as if we had the correct amino acid sequence. The second form of protein structure is secondary structure. And so this is referring to the folding of our polypeptide chain. And this folding is caused by interactions in the amino acids, mainly between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms within our amino acid molecules. There's two types of secondary structure within our proteins the first of which is an alpha helix. And so here we can see what an alpha helix looks like. It just kind of looks like this um, helix structure. And then we have the beta pleated sheet. And so here we have more of a linear structure and these sheets will often have arrows. So the sheets can either be folded so that they're running parallel, so the arrows running together or running anti-parallel running opposite directions. And it's important to note that within a single protein, we can have multiple types of secondary structure shown here. Moving on to our tertiary protein structure. So this is the third level of protein structure and it refers to the three dimensional shape of a polypeptide. And so you'll often see a figure that looks something like this. So within this, um, tube here, we would have the different alpha um, helix and beta pleated sheets, and then that folding will then be folded further into a 3D shape. And this is again due to interactions in the amino acids, 
but now this is mainly between the R groups of amino acids. So um, the, the variable R group within the amino acid. And I would also like to just refer you to an earlier video on amino acid structure, just so that you can refer to the amino acid structure um, in a little bit more detail if you wish. And these interactions that create our tertiary structure are mainly um, from types of non-covalent bonds. And so these include bonds such as ionic bonds, which is basically um, the R groups with different um, charges, so either positively or negatively charged, will either attract or repel each other. And then another really important bond in our tertiary structure is disulfide bonds. And so this is between the sulfur atoms in different R groups. And these are especially strong, making them essentially the safety pins of many proteins and keeping that tertiary shape. Finally, the fourth level of protein structure, the quaternary structure, is when some proteins will take their tertiary shape and then each of these kind of tertiary shapes of that protein is called a subunit. So taking that same tertiary shape that I showed in the previous slide, so this light red would be one subunit, and then the dark red there would be another, and then these different subunits can be combined in different shapes to form different functions. And so this is an example of um, the hemoglobin or the red blood cell or a protein in a red blood cell that I showed earlier. And it um, has four different subunits, which helps its function to carry oxygen. And these multiple subunits um, come together and this quaternary structure will be dependent mainly on the protein's function, as I mentioned. And so they can have really complex quaternary structure if the protein has a really complex function and needs to be able to um, have different um, kind of binding, shapes, binding sites in a complex shape. But it's also important to note that not all proteins will have quaternary structure, but all proteins will have at least tertiary structure. That is it for today's video. I hope that you found it informative and that you learned something. If you want to learn more about biology, please subscribe for more videos. Thanks.